Morning, my friends. Let's have some fun with Zoroasterism and how everything was always identical. We're going to have fun with our own ignorance here, just like always. Many people know too much about or have indeed ever heard of. To some, the extent of that knowledge is that it's the religion that Freddie Mercury belonged to. But the fact is, Zoroastrianism is... Hopefully I'm taking you guys along for the ride. When I started my research, my investigation, my life mis mission, and the internet was created, and it was out for a while and all that, and then we got our conspiracy videos, and I'm watching one of our classic kind of conspiracy videos that Jesus Christ isn't real, Jesus Christ is really Horus, and you're being fooled. And that was actually really traumatic for me. I, I, to walk through that, wait a minute, if I go into Jesus is really Horus, I might find out that Jesus Christ isn't really real. Oh, I was so naive and dumb. And then I wasn't a real like disciple of Jesus Christ at that time. So why was I afraid if Jesus Christ was going to be um, somehow my bubble was going to be burst? Oh, I hope that a lot of you are in that position because you're going to you're going to see how it's really worldwide for as long as history has been and um there's nothing that you need to protect um isn't that funny you know when i thought like oh no i better not go into jesus christ as horus cuz i'll find out that jesus christ isn't real and oh boy how naive how dumb jesus christ doesn't need you to stick up for him that's what i found out <laughs> jesus christ is worldwide for as long as history has um, been historically speaking is one of the most important religions to have ever existed The religion of Zoroastrianism is old. It's very old. Um, it originates in what is today Iran, in the region known as Persia, with the appearance of... And before we like really get into it, I'm thinking of all the hang-ups that I used to have that I can help all of you with. All the things that I used to think that were just so far away, so wrong. The prophets and quote-unquote founder Zarathustra, also known as Zoroaster in Greek. As in... Do you think that um, since Jesus Christ is worldwide for as long as history has been, do you think that it's any different from culture to culture? It's not. It doesn't matter what language it is. It doesn't matter what time in history. This one we're calling the very first religion of the world right here. It's no different. The way to understand this is the very first religion it's gnosis. It's you take your teachings of Jesus Christ and you live your life experiencing them. Your life experience unveils the mysteries of Jesus Christ. That's that's it. That it's always been gnosis. It always has to it, it's the human being discovering themselves. There, there's no other way to do it. There's only one Jesus Christ. There's only, Jesus Christ and his teachings have built the entire world. So if you if you don't understand how well how do, how does Jesus Christ work if it's like a different if it's a different language? Oh, I used to be that naive too. It, until I discovered that it's so simple. It's so simple. You got you get your teachings of Jesus Christ. They've always been the same. They're the same for every human being. You, you take your teachings of Jesus Christ, you live your life. The teachings reveal themselves by your own life experience. That's how it works for every single people, every culture, every everything that's ever existed. Then the Demi-Urge can't do it and makes a fake form of it where you're supposed to believe in it rather than actually doing it. Now, as with similar ancient figures like him, it's very, very hard, basically impossible to pin down an exact date for when he lived. We, we don't need an exact date. That, that, that's, that's the mind fuck of all this. That we don't need an we All we need is his teachings. We, his teachings prove him. His teachings prove him more than we can prove ourselves. His teachings prove the existence of all of civilization. And, I, and that's a small thing. 
I, I use that, the, how Jesus Christ teachings built all of civilization. That's huge, 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 huge. That, that, that's more provable as real than proving that you and I actually exist. Others suggest that it might have lived around, well, between 1400 to 1200 BCE, while others also say that it may have lived around 800 BCE, so th there isn't consensus about this. The religion practiced in Persia prior to Zarathustra's mission was a kind of polytheism or paganism, very closely connected to the Vedic tradition in India, from which other religions like Hinduism... Yeah, and yeah, that paganism, the, the, the culture built on sacrifice, that's the Old Testament. Then Jesus Christ destroys all their altars. Jesus Christ destroys all this Demiurge, the God of the Old Testament, and replaces it with Jesus Christ. Jainism and Buddhism also later developed. This can be seen by the fact that many of the gods cross over between the two traditions, uh, but have slightly different names. This is what we're here for, my friends. We're here to witness the ignorance. I mean, isn't it hilarious that it, the, the ignorance is like a prison? So watch how he says that there seem to be many crossovers between religions, and we leave, we leave it at that. You know what you and I are here to do? We're not leaving it at that. We're noticing that it's, did you know that they all have crossovers because they're identical one is built off the other. There is not another Jesus Christ. One is built off of the other. Gods cross over between the two traditions, uh, but have slightly different names based on the language. This yeah, shouldn't that tell us something? Shouldn't that tell us something? Should we not? We, we should wake up to this and not swim around in ignorance and just let the ignorance happen. We should say, hey, these things are more than similar. They're identical. Developed. This can be seen by the fact that many of the gods cross over between the two traditions, uh, but have slightly different names based on the language. This includes gods like Sarasvati and Indra and, and many others. The deities worshipped by the... When you're on the other side of this, it's a, it, the puzzle, the mystery, is how they all swim in ignorance. It's not whimsically... I, um, it's not whimsically, almost like remotely kind of, those kind of things look similar, but they're different. No, they look similar because they're identical. ...were associated with things like water and fire, as well as natural phenomena or abstract concepts like love or wisdom. The cult and worship surrounding these deities included things like offerings and animal sacrifice, all performed by a class of priests. Shouldn't that be the tip off? The whole, the sacrifice thing. The sacrifice is Old Testament. So th this is all Old Testament Temple of Baal stuff. Uh, very similar to the Brahmins of the Indian cult. Oh, hey guys, look, look, he said it's similar to the Brahmin priest. Uh, no, it's identical to the, that's what we need to wake up to. It's not similar. It's one is built off of the other. A class of priests. Uh, very similar to the Brahmins of the Indian what, cult. One is built off of the other while the Gnosis is hidden within everything worldwide. It, all you have to do is you've already done it. You're a student of the mystery school. So the things that you've learned here, you've tried to express to somebody of the general public and they wanted to kill you for it. Regular things that you felt were just regular things. Great revelations that you learned here at the mystery school, you went to go share with a family member, a friend, just somebody, and they wanted to kill you for all that. It's been the same for as long as history has been. So you have this religion shit and you have the Gnosis hidden within it. You have to hide the Gnosis because people will kill you for the Gnosis. Doesn't matter who you are, what language you speak, where, what time you lived in, where in the world, they will kill you for the Gnosis. The prophet and founder Zarathustra most likely belonged <coughs> to this class of priests. It is said that he would wander around Persia looking for wisdom. Oh, and, and I'll, I'll, I should do it at the beginning. I apologize, everybody. I'm sniffing, I'm coughing, I'm blowing my nose. This cold, this cold is just still hanging around. So thank you for all the, the, the sniffing and everything that I got to do, just suffering through it. I'm the one suffering. You got to hear all the disgustingness of it. Truth. 
Um, and during these travels, he would see a lot of injustice, a lot of violence, and just a lot of nasty stuff in general, which would, of course, influence the very ethically based... Isn't it beautiful that you understand that it, Jesus Christ and his teachings, doesn't it... It beats all language barriers. It beats all time, all history. And you realize it's the same gnosis, the same thing. That's the authentic original Christianity. You take his teachings and you live your life by them. Doesn't it, 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 it I, I don't know how to, it's so beautiful. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to share it with you. That isn't this incredibly beautiful that it breaks all language barriers. You don't have to feel like if we looked at Eastern stuff, Eastern stuff would be very confusing because it's like, yeah, but we got all these gods and all this stuff, and and it's and it's just so um, it's so active and has too much going on. It might be confusing of like, yeah, but I don't understand in Eastern stuff how it's all rooted in Jesus Christ because it has all this shit around it all, and it's it's in in the core of Buddhism is the teachings of Jesus Christ in the core of everything. The Gnosticism is hidden, which is original Christianity, which is just as simple as you take his teachings and you use your own life experience to discover what they mean. So I think it, it, it it's a huge barrier for us. If you're looking at Jesus Christ from Zoroastrianism, um, don't think that it's different. It's not a different Jesus Christ, he doesn't have different teachings. A message that he would later convey. And his life, according to tradition, is said to have changed dramatically one day when he was celebrating a spring festival. And during... Look, guys, we're into the original religion of the entire fucking world. What we know is the original religion. It, it's all rooted in Jesus Christ. <laughs> Festival, he went down to the water to fetch or fetch some water for the festival. And after he had been standing in waist high water uh, and returned to shore, uh, being th thus ritually purified, he then suddenly had an intense vision of light. And in this light, he experienced the presence of the god Ahura Mazda. I, I, I don't even want to. I don't even want to mention the, the. There's original baptism. He did original baptism, and then. He had a revelation, a divine revelation after he had baptism, original baptism. Six you know, that's going to be the explanation of the water in the in Martin's pictures, where Martin is criticizing, bringing up all those pictures and being like, look how, look how it has the water every single time. Yeah, every detail of it's the same every single time. The, the water symbolized absolutely has to do with original baptism, what it really is radiant beings from which he then received his first revelation. The god Ahura Mazda was nothing new to Zarathustra or the Persians. He was a god who had been worshipped prior to this and whose name literally means Lord Wisdom. He was one of the more exalted gods in the pantheon, belonging to a group of gods called the Ahuras. It makes it difficult for us because we don't know what gods are. So don't think that you know what go gods are are aspects of ourself. Gods are planetary things. It's things that we do. It's the same as the Demiurge. It's other aspects of ourselves. While it's also a calendar, while it's also the Mayan calendar at the same time, while it's also astrological things at the same time. Indian equivalent of which is Ashura. What was so unique about the revelation that Zarathustra received and that he would convey was that Ahura Mazda was no longer just some god. He was now the one uncreated eternal god who was the creator of the world. So now we have Jesus Christ. And, and, I, and now I, I'm not sure. We're going to have to listen more. Is Jesus Christ learning the real God, and then he's he's figuring out. Wait a minute, the God, the God that we worship, the God of the Old Testament. Wait a minute, that's not God. Everything. Good. You know, it's a, it's just the same as if you read the Book of Job 
and you somehow thought the God of the book of Job is actually God. No, that's the God of dark and light. That's the God of duality. That's the God of the Old Testament. Ahura Mazda was the guardian and embodiment of a concept called Asha, meaning the order of the universe, and in a moral sense also represented things like righteousness and justice. The opposite of this is a term called drudge, synonymous with things like evil, falsehood, and violence. So are we, see, are we talking about the real God here? Or it appears that we're, we're making a duality of it. The God of light versus the God of dark. That was always the same ego, the same God of the Old Testament. Let's see. These forces were... If, it, if that's what it is, it's going to show us that this is the God of dark and light. Then Jesus Christ comes to show you the unknowable God of the New Testament, the New Covenant. You know, in that long video I made with Jonathan and Jordan Peterson and all of that, you, you know... The creation of Ahura Mazda. You know, they all wanted to talk about how they have a contract with God. There is no contract. There's the new covenant that, that God has with man. By another immortal being called Angra Menu, or the hostile spirit. In the teachings of Zarathustra, the world of creation is a... Understand the hostile spirit. That can only be the Demiurge. The hostile spirit, but these two might be the demiurge. Constant battlefield between the forces of Asha and Drudge. There we go. Now we got it. We got it. It's really talking about the god of light and dark. Did you hear him? Uh, I'll play it again. It's this eternal battle between light and dark, between good and evil, but none of it was ever really good and evil. Menu or the hostile spirit. In the teachings of Zarathustra, the world of creation is a constant battlefield between the forces of Asha and Drudge. Did you hear that? The world is a constant battlefield between light and darkness. That's not God. That's the God of the Old Testament. That's the God of duality. That's the God of the blind. Creation is a constant battlefield between the forces of Asha and Drudge, between good and evil, light and darkness. Zarathustra himself left behind a collection of hymns known as the Gothas, which was first orally transmitted and then written down under the Sasanian Empire. The Gothas can be considered the sort of most sacred scriptures to the Zoroastrians and are part of a larger collection of sacred texts called the Avesta, the rest of which was written after Zoroaster or Zarathustra um, uh, by priests. A question that quickly arises with this very strongly dualistic outlook is the very nature of Zoroastrianism's theology. So the, the nature of Zoroastrianism or whatever the is basically the god of light and dark, then everybody believes that God is the god of light. And no, that's not God. That's duality. And people get confused and think that somehow the blue pillar, the, the light pillar, is somehow God, and the dark pillar is Satan. And that was the Demiurge. Some claim that Zoroastrianism is a monotheistic religion. So do you see how this, all of this is irrelevant when they start saying shit like this? People believe that Zoroastrianism is a mono... All this gnosis is embedded within it. This is their fake shit, their Demiurgery that's all on top of it. Apology. As like, uh, the, end, the conversation that you and I are having is deeply rooted in truth. You know how to derail that truth? Start saying stupid shit like this. Some claim that Zoroastrianism is a monotheistic religion. It doesn't pertain to anything. It doesn't matter. Uh, some people claim that it's a, this monotheistic religion. It doesn't matter. We have the real teachings embedded within the whole thing. We got the our God of light and dark and how that's not the real God. That's the important information. That's what's embedded in all of this stuff. This whole, uh, some claim that it's a monotheist religion. Some claim it's this. That, that doesn't pertain to anything. That doesn't mean anything. But others say that it's a dualistic faith or dualistic theology. There we, there, that means something. People say that it's a dualistic faith. That means that you are worshiping the God of duality. You are worshiping the God of the Old Testament if it's a dualistic nightmare.
And then Jesus Christ says, you should not judge. And then us stupid human beings think that Jesus Christ is literally telling us not to judge something when Jesus Christ is giving us the release from this duality and the greatest teaching that I've ever come across of how to escape this duality is Jesus Christ when he says, do not judge. And no human being will ever understand that that was the release of duality. It's not a set of rules for you to follow. It's not that, oh, Jesus Christ said, don't judge, so just let all evil happen and then don't judge. No, it's way more complicated than any of that. It, it's so complicated, there's no way to ever describe it. But when you are doing it, when you're living it, you really know that you're living it. You really know that you're doing it. Then you try to explain what a non-dualistic reality is and oh, rea the, all the duality will trip you up when you try to explain it. Zoroastrianism's theology. Some claim that Zoroastrianism is a monotheistic religion, while others say that it is a dualistic faith or dualistic theology. Scholars and Zoroastrians alike have never really been able to agree on whether or not Zoroastrianism is a monotheistic It doesn't matter. It, 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 all of the truth is already embedded in it. We, the teachings of Jesus Christ, and we use our life to do gnosis. None of this shit matters. Religion or not. All, all these things, that's dualistic. They want to fight in a dualistic reality. Is it monotheistic? Is it not? And they all missed it. They all missed what it really was and what it was for. Um, but if it is, that would be pretty significant because then it would be most likely the oldest. It, it don't mean shit. All this stuff is for a child. All of this all the all this wisdom, all these teachings are for a child that isn't concerned with all this stuff. Religion in the world that we know of. Scholars like Mary Boyce argues for the dualistic alternative. Like, like how easy is it? You take a five year old child and you teach him to do Gnosis with the teachings of Jesus Christ. That's all the, the child needed to know. That was the highest wisdom that there could be. That's the highest way to live, the highest wisdom. You give that child the teachings of Jesus Christ, you give him Gnosis, and you let him live his life. You let him discover himself. And all this shit is, is demi-urgery where human beings have decided to believe in something and then they want to fight about it. How does this, how does any of this extra shit apply to giving a child the teachings of Jesus Christ than teaching them to do Gnosis to figure out what they mean? Ahura Mazda and Angra Menu as equally uncreated opposing forces, while others like Farhang Mer proposes a view where Zarathustra's original message was that there was but one God and dualistic forces were part of his creation, thus below him. But perhaps it's wiser to look at this from a more nuanced perspective and not try to define Zoroastrianism with such arbitrary and anachronistic really uh, terms like monotheism or polytheism. That's right, yes. None of that shit pertains. None of it at all. It's, a, it, it's what trips everybody up. It's the fluff on top of it all. There have been other arguments, like that of James Boyd and Donald Crosby, who suggest that none of the above explanations are good enough. Instead, they propose that, quote, in brief, the interpretation we favor is that Zoroastrianism combines cosmogenic dualism and eschatological monotheism. They're and all arguing between the god, the god of dark and light. They're all arguing that, no, I want to believe that the god of duality is really god. No, I want to, uh, uh, that's what this is about unique to itself among the major religions in the world. This combination results in a religious outlook which cannot be categorized as either straightforward dualism or straightforward monotheism. The fact is that the old Iranian or Persian pantheon of gods remain in the Zoroastrian system, at least according to... Yeah, uh, all those gods, especially if you grew up in Generation X, it's funny, everything nowadays, it's all superhero movies, we can't get a good movie, it's just the next Avengers movie. But that's where all that shit comes from. Thor and um, Superman. See, I, I don't even want to say Thor because that makes it too easy. It's more like understanding that this is this all this shit made Superman. All this shit made Spider-Man. Same old gods, just repackaged. Same old Avengers. Theological uh, ideas. 
When the Prophet had his first vision at the river, it is said that he saw, along with Ahura Mazda himself, a group of six lesser beings. These are known as the Spentamenu, or six lesser divinities, all representing different attributes of the high god, like righteousness. Yeah, they, they've divided up our psyche. They, these are all representing archetypes and ways that you and I um, exist. The way that we talk to each other, the way that we think, the way that we believe that we are our own egos. Devotion. Yeah, they made it complicated. They made it all complicated. And health while remaining hierarchically beneath him and sort of part of his creation. They are sometimes considered emanations of Ahura Mazda. With these yeah, they're emanations of us. There's the archetypes and attributes of, of, of us as human beings. Of a f torch lighting other torches. Look, look, look at this one. Two pillars and a, and, a, and a door where you walk into the woman. Look at that one. Describe. I mean, they're all, they're all the same, but this one is screaming. Uh, process of you know, this, this one's just typical Mary symbolism. The crescent moon and all that. It's just typical Mary stuff. Another term used to describe these lesser divinities is Amesha Spentas, or Holy Immortals. But this term is also used to refer to any lesser deity who emanates from Ahura Mazda, and includes most of the old gods of the Pantheon. Thus, worship and veneration of the old gods continued under Zoroastrianism. Yeah, and they split all these things up into, um, they all equal Demiurge in the end. So we don't need to split them all up and pretend that they're different aspects and all that. It's all Demiurgery and especially of the highest six uh, divinities because these represented uh, attributes this this is this is the same confusion of like what it would be to go into eastern stuff and all their gods and all their shit and everything and in the end it all equaled demiurgery we don't need it all split up of the high god Ahura Mazda and were thus worshipped um, separately the exception to this is another group of deities known as the Devas, which also has an Indian equivalent of the same name. These gods represent things like violence and war, and thus they serve the hostile spirit Angra Menu rather than Ahura Mazda. And Zarathustra very strongly rejected any worship of these. So, so, so in our basic psychology, it would be when the narcissist moves into being a psychopath. And then that's their their god of violence and injustice and all that shit. Save us, these deities. In Zoroastrian cosmology, creation is seen as cyclical and often divided into three phases. The first of which is called simply creation. It's the first phase when Ahura Mazda, God... The, these creation stories are so incredibly linked to science. That's what I think of when I hear these creation stories. It's like hearing ancient science. And then uh, I win. I win with giving a five-year-old the teachings of Jesus Christ and teaching him gnosis to live his whole life. But I win. I, I, you don't need all this. It's the world in a perfect state, free from all evil and all darkness. But as soon as this creation comes about, the evil spirit Angra Menu attacks it and infiltrates it with darkness and... and oh, what, what's the evil? It's a lion. It's, it's the same old symbolism of Yalta Beoth. Yes. Same old lion. We find it at the beginning. We find it all the way through. Same old lion-headed snake. This starts the second phase known as mixture, when both good and evil, light and darkness exist. Uh, look, 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 it's a story of good and evil. Uh, what Jesus Christ, it's the, they have the law. And then Jesus Christ comes to destroy this law of good and evil and replace it with the door of Jesus Christ. The second phase, known as mixture, when both good and evil, light and darkness, exist alongside each other in the world and are battling. This is the time we live in now. So obviously, giant pandas are the creation of Ahura Mazda, while uh, stepping in water with your socks on is clearly the creation of Angra Menu. Human beings are also important players in this cosmic battle. I, I, I would think human beings are an important part of it because we're talking about the aspects of ourselves. The good deities have a responsibility. Uh, to... All these people are convinced that, that all these things are somehow outside of them. And they're somehow describing something other than them.
promote righteousness and goodness. Oh, oh, look, they're promoting righteousness and goodness. That's how you fail. You, you, you don't know what these things are. You have to discover them through your life itself and living them. The, uh, thinking that, well, we're going to support righteousness or any of that shit. That's how you fail. There's no failing in God. There's failing when you and I try to do it ourselves. You know, that's what these teachings are really all, all about. You want to be a failure? Well, believe all this shit is outside of you. You want to be a failure? Try to be righteous. That's how you fail at all this stuff. You try to be it. You you become it by living it. You become it by understanding all these things are you. They're the aspects of you. Deities have a responsibility to promote righteousness and goodness and expel evil and darkness from the world. Oh, this that's is how you make communism. Hey, guys, look, they're all on the bright side. They're all trying to live on what they think is the pillar of light. Oh, we're, we're on the good pillar and everybody else is a dirty sinner on the evil pillar. And that was the God of duality. You were supposed to learn past the God of duality and you were supposed to learn that it's you. The creation of Andromenu. Human beings are also important players in this cosmic battle. And much like the good deities have a responsibility to promote righteousness and goodness and expel evil and darkness from the world. Sh show me how to expel evil and darkness for the world and I'll show you what a failure is. That's you. This is done in All these people trying to live on the bright side and expel everybody that says a word that they don't like. That's what it turns into. Of ways, but turns into a big old witch hunt through the basic moral principle that was laid down by Zarathustra, which is good thoughts, good words, and good things. That, that's, the God, that's the God of the Old Testament. Hey, hey, guys, try to have good thoughts. Well, that's how you fail, trying to have good thoughts. You're trying to. Um, hey, guys, have good words. Well, that's a way to fail. We all persecute each other, claiming everybody's saying the wrong word. Try to have good deeds. Your good deeds are filthy fucking rags in front of God. All you're trying to do these things, you end up doing exactly the opposite of what you're trying to do. Thus, humans and creation have a clear purpose in Zoroastrianism. That is to gradually expel the forces of Angramenu, of evil, until the third and... See, this is what Jesus Christ came to solve. All this shit of where they think that they're dispelling evil by being on one side. It's the same God. It's the God of good and evil. And they think that they're on the good side of the God of good and evil. Jesus Christ comes and shows that it was always the same God. It was always duality. And you're trying to stay on one side of duality and expel the other side of duality. And Jesus brings this new covenant, this thing nobody could ever think their way into. The door of Jesus Christ is the solution for your God of good and evil. Face is reached. But somehow they come out to this conclusion that they need to do sacrifices to their God of good and evil to stay on the good side of their God of good and evil. Separation, when creation is once again in a perfect paradisial state. Given the fact that Zarathustra's message was so ethically based, he introduced certain ideas that were revolutionary for his time. For example, in his thought, people would be judged after death. Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, it's the same shit that the Egyptians and everything else, everything that they believe, and that's what Christians believe, that's what everybody believes, and you're going to be judged after you die. If coming from the world's first religion, because they're all built off of each other. It, there's no such thing as a separate religion. <laughs> For his time. One is built off another. You only have one teachings of Jesus Christ. You, it's not two teachings of Jesus Christ. It's not two Jesus Christ. For example, in his thought, people would be judged after death. Uh, and this judgment would lead either to reward or punishment. And yeah, the, the old weighing of the heart ceremony. Um, departed souls. Let, let, let's wake up to these things. Let, let's wake up to it's not like, oh, these things are so vague and, and things appear similar. They're fucking identical. They're not similar. Based on their actions in this life. See, look, 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 here it is. Here's the shit that Jesus Christ came to destroy. They used to believe 
that they worked their way to heaven through good deeds. And that's not how you work your way to heaven. And look how it, the Old Testament way of working your way to heaven, believing that you can get to heaven through your deeds. And that's not how it works. This judgment would lead either to reward or punishment. And most importantly, um, departed souls were judged based on their actions in this life and not on things like riches or status. That which... Jesus Christ shows us that that's how you set yourself up for failure. You will fail thinking that you can buy your way into the kingdom of heaven. The case it does not work through thinking you're a good person. It does not work through, oh, Jesus Christ told me to be humble, so I'm going to go work in a soup kitchen and feed the homeless. Yes, please go do that. That's a great thing. Please go work at the homeless shelter or what the fuck ever. But if you thought that you were buying your way into heaven, no, absolutely not. ...in this life and not on things like riches or status, which was the case in the earlier pagan religion. No, no, that's what you're talking about. Look, look, look how it's confused. You're saying the same thing. You're buying your way into heaven through what you think is good deeds. Oh, God sees those as dirty rags. Oh, those are just the most horrible fucking thing. What you think is good deeds and I'm doing something good here. And this judgment would lead either to reward or punishment. And most importantly, um, departed souls were judged based on their actions in this life and not on things like riches or status, which was the case in the earlier pagan religion. Thus, reward was open to anyone. And so was punishment. So it didn't matter if you were rich or what status you had. If you'd been a bad person, you would end up being punished after death. If you had been deemed good, then you'll be able to cross a bridge. Yeah, that's the that's the god of duality. Uh, are you good or are you evil? Being punished after death. If you had been deemed good, then you'll be able to. Oh, have you been deemed good? Are you on the on the bright side of the god of duality? Cross a bridge into a paradise of delights. But if you had been bad, then that bridge would contract to a, the size of a blade's edge, and you would most likely fall. Oh, you get into Dante's Inferno. Into hell, a place of great torment and torture. Furthermore, at the end of time, when the battle of good and evil is... The, the great torture is living in duality. All the human beings living in duality, it's a torture to us. The duality is abusive to us. It makes all horrible human beings. It makes us a facsimile of ourselves. It makes us hate everybody. It makes us hate everything. It makes us self-loathers out of ourselves, creates all the, the human condition. All the bodies of the dead will be resurrected and subjected to a last judgment. Look, look at this painting. Look at this one. This dude's dressed in blue. This one's over here representing the duality once again, uh, right out of our, our own modern day political system. It's Bahura Mazda, after which you will either live in hell or remain in the paradise like land of the. Look at how hell, hell's represented by duality, guys. Look, all these people are in hell. And look at the God above them. The God above them of hell is duality. The God of duality is the God of the blind. The God of hell that we live in. Because we live in duality with a dualistic thinking. Jesus Christ comes to save us from this hell that we cannot save ourselves from because we just make more of it. Every single time we think we got a good idea, ah, I got this good idea, and um, we just build more of this prison. We build more of it for each other and ourselves. Perfected creation, which is now free. But look at all these people down here in all of their opinions. It's the world that we live in right now, where um, truth is hated and opinions. Opinions work perfect with the duality. Truth ends the duality. And darkness. In terms of practice, Zoroastrianism has gone through a number of developments throughout history. Um, Zoroastrians have often been rather negatively uh, referred to as fire worshippers by the... Oh, fire worshippers by Muslims. Oh, I paused it right when he's saying that. They've been, they've been called fire worshippers by, by the other culture. Yeah, no, it's not even relevant. That, and that's what the education is, is to realize 
99% of everything is absolutely irrelevant. It's the belief systems of human beings. Where you and I, we're not interested in the, in the belief system of human beings. We're interested in what it actually is. Negatively uh, referred to as fire worshippers by the Muslim conquerors, for example. But this is a rather misleading term. It is true that fire... Well, yeah, because it's an, it's an invading army trying to destroy... So why would we listen to what the invading army calls their rivals? They're trying to destroy their culture. So that's one way that they tried to destroy their culture is call them fire worshippers. Is an important role. Just like our culture is being destroyed by woke. The practice and symbolism of the faith, serving as the symbol for purity and God's wisdom and light. Fire, as well as water, appear to have been an important part of ritual for Zoroastrian since the very inception. But the appearance of things like fire temples or heightened platforms with fire altars appear to have been a much later development, probably sometime in the, during the Achaemenid Empire. But nonetheless, fire yeah, was that's a, a, It's all the shit that Jesus Christ came to destroy to say, why are you doing this? That's what, that's what they hated Jesus Christ for. They all do this stupid ritual shit. Then Jesus Christ goes, what are you doing? Don't you have a family to take care of? Don't you have something to do? Like, what are you doing here, you dumb people? And then they all wanted to kill Jesus Christ for that. This is their sacred ritual. And Jesus Christ said, you know, you got more important things to do than don't you? You know, this ain't even it. What are you even, what are you people doing here? Did become and still remain very important aspects of the faith and their practice. Connected to this fire and its representation. Uh, Jesus Christ comes up and says, don't you got something more important to do? Like living your life by the teachings of Jesus Christ? You know, they, they, they all have this more important thing to do. It's all based in their egos. It's so far away. So far away. The idea of ritual purity, which is one of the most important... Oh, the idea of ritual purity. Oh, where I need Jesus Christ because I want Jesus Christ to take a shit on your um, spiritual purity. Very important aspects of the faith and their practice. Connected to this, fire and its representation of purity is the idea of ritual purity, which is one of the most important aspects. Oh, of how could you ever fail at um, ritual spiritual purity? Oh, well, the, all these are the ways. I mean, you try to do it. You, you, it's how you set yourself up for failure. What's all? The, what are they? What are you people doing? We need Jesus Christ to set you straight here. This faith. Um, it is the duty of every person to keep clean because... Uh, oh, look, 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 look at how they're God of the Old Testament. They don't know how to keep clean through the teachings of Jesus Christ. They don't know how to do these things. So they think it's some like ritual practice and they're going to have this great effort in somehow being spiritual, spiritually clean. And, and what I have to say to this is we need Jesus Christ. I mean, Jesus Christ really needs to uh, educate these bozo the clowns here. The idea of ritual purity, which is one of the most important aspects of this faith. Um, it is oh, the duty did Jesus of Christ walk up to these people and go, you're the most spiritually unpure. You who claim that you can see, you are the blindest of them all. Person to keep clean because uh, you know, dirtiness or uncleanliness is an aspect or manifestation of evil and darkness. This led to oh, hey guys, dirt, dirt and grime is is oh, you wouldn't want to be on the evil side of the god of good and evil. You wouldn't want to. That's dirty. That's the that's the evil pillar of the god of good and evil. Laws regarding ritual purity, which unfortunately, for example, uh, limited women and their movements uh, during their menstrual periods, for example. Yeah, they, they, they have all this ritual purity, and they think, and then then Jesus Christ goes, "What you? What are you? What are you doing? What, what are you doing with all this? Come on, you, you, you're the most unpure of them all." Seen as unclean for its duration. One can also see similar ideas expressed in the rather famous funerary rites of the Zoroastrians. As the body was considered unclean, once the soul had departed from it, the body was taken out to an open space where it would be eaten by animals. And yeah, it's a, at the it, same as all uh, everything in the Bible. Same as everything in the Bible. Somebody dies and then they take him to a cave. That's where they buried Jesus Christ. 
This would later be collected. They took Jesus Christ to one of these caves and buried him in there. Same, same as it ever was. Same as all of it ever was. To await the day. Look, look, look at the symbolism. Two pillars and a door right here. I wonder what that is. Oh my God, nobody could ever know anything. Direction. Why don't you keep in mind that this is all connected to the cosmic <coughs> battle between Asha and Drudge and thus seen as a necessary and logical measure to fulfill our purpose in creation. Moreover, another important ritual practice of Zoroastrianism is the celebration of seven yearly festivals, all connected to these six Amesha Spentas. You, you got seven yearly festivals? Cool. What, but, but what are they? Did did Jesus Christ come and destroy who we believe we are and ever and all that and are we rebuilt in Jesus Christ? Because see, we can have celebrations that we celebrate our freedom that Jesus Christ gave us. That we used to be the captives, the captive of the demi urge, and we can have seven festivals. We can have we can build churches to sub, but but um, if we did it the other way around. Well, I mean, I'm going to need Jesus Christ to come laugh at your seven fucking sub festivals. I, I need Jesus Christ to do some Jesus Christ shit. Divinities. Uh, and one also connected to fire, which could be seen as... I mean, that, that's what Jesus Christ did. He went around laughing at all this shit. And then everybody wanted to kill him for it. Mm -hmm. Then they did kill him for it. Life the, then, they, then they hung him on a sword as a warning to you. And the festival of fire is known as No Ruz, or also known today as Persian New Year, uh, on the day of the spring equinox. And this was meant originally to signify, because the summer is coming, to signify the partial and temporary victory of light over darkness. Oh, hey guys, they're celebrating the temporary victory of the, it's the same thing, the god of light and dark. They're celebrating one half of the god of, of d light and dark. Of the spring equinox. And nothing's, nothing's ever changed. It was meant originally to signify, because the summer is coming, to signify the partial and temporary victory of light over darkness. The priest of Zoroastrianism is called Magi. Imagine what they do to the people. Uh, uh, look at what's said. The temporary victory. The, understand all the people are policed with this shit. How many people did they torture? How many people did they kill? How many people did they ostracize from their community while they're saying, well, I mean, we decided that you said a word we don't like. That's the, that's the, we don't want to be on the bad side of the God of good and evil. So make sure you're always on the bright side saying bright side shit. Pretend that you're happy when you're really sad or we'll fucking kill you for that. So understand the whole society is, is ran by the god of, of light and dark. And they're afraid to get on the bad side. And they all police each other. They torture each other. They kill each other over this shit. Signify, because the summer is coming, to signify the partial and temporary victory of light over darkness. The priest of Zoroastrianism is called Magi, a term that was used by the Greeks to refer to the entire religion. So those well. are the scribes and the Pharisees that Jesus Christ was always battling against. These Magi right here. Magi, a term that was used by the Greeks. The, to... These are the ones that say that they can see. Look how they all dress themselves in white. Because they want to be on the good side. Uh, uh, look, and look at all the... What, what's their face coverings? Are they afraid of coronavirus? No. They came up with stupid fucking laws of their duality god. And they, they um, imposed them over the people. To the entire... These are some fucking wicked motherfuckers right here that claim that they can see. ...as well. Uh, a fun fact is that according to the New Oh, Testament, oh, the, these people think that they're pure and righteous. Oh, we're going to need Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ needs to show these people they are the most evil of them all. It was three magi that visited Jesus in Bethlehem when carrying gifts. Uh, yeah, uh, I was going to say that. I was going to say that. I'm glad he did. Uh, did you know that these aren't just whimsical parallels? That one is literally built off of the other. So when we find the exact same thing worldwide, it's not a coincidence. It, how, how, how does this ignorance work of this demi-urge? These things, how can 
it just be complete ignorance for every single human being? That boggles my fucking mind. Look, we're going to say, okay, the three magi and Jesus Christ, and it's chalked up to, well, I guess nobody could ever know anything. How could you, how can this be chalked up to, well, I guess everything's random opinions. Nobody could never know shit about anything. Look, look at this. It was three magi that visited Jesus in Bethlehem when carrying gifts. Yeah, also it's not, not a fucking coincidence as sometimes as the three wise men. In fact, this connection to other religions... Then, then I show you that in the Sumerian tablets. I literally show you these three wise men in the fucking Sumerian tablets. You know, most of you probably think, oh, he's doing a Flat Earth Martin right there. And it's like, no, it, it is what it is, my friends. It is what it is. What makes Zoroastrianism so special? If you remember what I said in the beginning, Zoroastrianism is arguably one of the most important religions in history, and this is partly due to how much it has affected uh, the religions of the world. Concepts introduced by the Zoroastrians, like heaven and hell, the day of resurrection. Oh, they that... introduced the God of the Old Testament. And how he, now he's saying point blank things. Still, humanity chalks it up to, well, I guess people have random opinions and belief systems, and I wouldn't want to step on people's random belief systems because um, they might get mad at me. So how about if we just chalk all this shit up to our ignorance and nobody could ever know anything? And we still do that. And the guy is now speaking in absolutes. And we take those absolutes and we go, well, I guess nobody could ever know anything. I mean... And this is partly due to how much it has affected uh, the religions of the world. Concepts introduced by the Zoroastrians, like heaven and hell, the day of resurrection and the last judgment, as well as the dualistic cosmology with an evil adversary to God and his servants, the Devas, and even the idea of a coming savior, or in Abrahamic terms, Messiah. It is highly probable that these- Bro, you just said some absolutes, man. Uh, the, the magic trick is how do all human beings turn that into, well, that wasn't an absolute. It's like they just kind of appear similar. No, they're they're absolutely identical. It is not a, it's a, well, they just kind of appear similar. I wouldn't want to hurt somebody's fragile belief system. Coming savior or in Abrahamic terms, messiah. It is highly probable that these ideas made it into Judaism in the post -ex Listen to him. He goes, it's highly probable. It's an absolute. It couldn't be any other way. It's not a whimsical opinion. Davis, and even the idea of a coming savior, or in Abrahamic terms, Messiah. It is highly probable that these ideas made it into Judaism in the post-exile period, and thus very much influenced its uh, development going forward. These ideas were then later picked up. By li we were sh literally shown the scribes and Pharisees from Jesus of Nazareth, and it's blowing me away on it's the it's identically the same. Christianity and Islam, and serves as some of the most fundamental aspects of these religions. Oh, he also went through the other religions. I I talked over it. Let me rewind it a little bit. Listen, he goes. It's it's even in Muslim shit. It's everywhere. It's development going forward. These ideas were then later picked up by both Christianity and Islam and serves as some of the most fundamental aspects of these religions. So it isn't entirely wrong to say that many of the fundamental principles of the three Abrahamic world religions, as well as the Baha'i faith, um, have their direct origins in Zoroastrianism and the teachings of Zarathustra. After its initial spread, Zoroastrianism really only became a significant force on the world scene with the appearance of the Achaemenid Empire, also known as the Persian Empire, which adopted Zoroastrianism as... Makes it a lot fun. It makes it a lot more fun when I make videos on Sumerian artifacts and all that kind of stuff. Kind it's of been a long time since I've done it, but all this kind of stuff kind of gives me some inspiration. Religion. Now, this is the empire, of course, with Cyrus the Great and Darius and Xerxes and all these people. Its doctrines further developed over time, and as it continued to serve as the state religion for the other empires, the Seleucids and the Sasanians, it sort of remained strong right up until the time of the Arab invasion at the advent of Islam, after which it kind uh, of... I, 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 heard him, I heard him say Xerxes there. I, I almost didn't say anything. I mean, you know, the leader of BLM, kneel to BLM. Lem, Neil to Xerxes.
started to decline. It is true that the conquering Muslims... Yeah, the, the Xerxes shit is definitely the founder of BLM. Everything that BLM has to do is exactly Xerxes. ...gave the Zoroastrians a, let's say, a hard time, that for much of history since then, they have been an oppressed minority. But one should also remember that in many periods and by many people, the Zoroastrians were also considered among the Ahl al-Kitab, the people of the book, and thus they were considered protected people by the Muslims. But this doesn't change the fact that oppression still happened, of course. Temples were destroyed and so... All this destruction, all these murders, all this death, all this war over the god of duality while all this shit was so simple but it's not it is for if you're a sane human being it's very simple to do gnosis if you're a narcissist it's impossible for you to do gnosis and you hate those that do so it's so simple. It is so that all these world wars and all this conquering and killing of everybody was over the Demiurge. It was over their God of good and evil, and they hate Jesus Christ. But one should be careful not to use a reading of history that is too black or white in any of the two. Oh, what did you say, bro? Don't, don't use a reading of history that's too much black and white like the uh, God of black and white? One should be careful not to use a reading of history that is too black or white in any of the two extreme directions. As a result of these historical circumstances, many of the Zoroastrians moved to India, and over time, there developed two rather distinct groups, often referred to as, on the one hand, the Iranian Zoroastrians, and on the other, the Indian... So they took this stuff to the East, and now we understand how the Eastern religions came about, while... The Gnosis is packed inside while all of it has to be hidden because people will kill you for Gnosis. The later of which Freddie Mercury belonged to. Uh, all, all this fighting is over the Gnosis. All this fighting is that they believe that they are the god of duality. Their god is the god of duality. And all this fighting is over the door of Jesus Christ. That they hate the door of Jesus Christ and they love their god of duality. All this war is, is all this shit, all this killing is to protect their god of duality. It's exactly the same as... If you went and said a truth and it reflects off of other human beings and they want to kill you for it, all this killing is because of that. It's because of the truth. The history and distinction of these two groups will have to be saved for another. The truth triggers people into violence. But this grouping still remains today. But nonetheless, the persecution and oppression that the Zoroastrians have faced, especially in Iran... Oh, I'm, no, I'm sure that you're talking about original Zoroastrianism, which would be original Christianity. At the core of this is your real teachings of Jesus Christ and living Gnosis to figure them out. Yes, the... That would be at the core of all this. Then you have those dumbass magis that are the same scribes and Pharisees from the teachings of Jesus Christ. They, those, that they have narcissistic personality disorder. Persecution and oppression that the Zoroastrians have faced, especially in Iran, cannot be ignored in a video like this. It still continues to this day. You, the... you would be, if you're talking about the persecution of Zoroaster, if, if we're talking about the authentic thing, you're talking about the persecution of Christian of Christians worldwide. Christians are the most persecuted, hated people through all of time, and it's the same people. So if we were talking about the persecution, it's the same thing. But nonetheless, the persecution and oppression that the Zoroastrians have faced... Same, same, same persecution you will feel from the outside world at, at our mystery school. Same thing. Especially in Iran, cannot be ignored in a video like this. It still continues to this day under the current Iranian leadership. And it's, this unfortunate history has been a contributing factor to the religion's decline in numbers. The actual number of Zoroastrians in the world today is difficult to know for sure, partly due to the, the state the, of... The number of Zoroastrianism in the world today would be the same as original Christianity, doing Gnosis, taking your teachings of Jesus Christ and living your life by them.
Is in your wrong. It but, was always that simple. All this persecution, all this death, all this killing of God's true people. A study conducted in 2012 by the Federation of Zoroastrian Associations of North America shows that the numbers might be slightly above 100,000 people, which of course isn't a lot. And most of these live in India or Central Europe. Uh, it, it makes sense. Jesus Christ only had 100 followers. Yeah, well, it would make sense with also diaspora communities in places like North America and Great Britain. Indeed, Zoroastrianism is sometimes called a dying religion due to its decreasing numbers and partly due to its reluctance to accept any converts. The reality might be such that in the near future there won't be any Zoroastrians left. And this would be a shame because it's a fascinating and rich tradition and one that is incredibly significant for our world heritage and the development of the so-called world religions. We probably wouldn't be where we are without Zoroastrianism and Zarathustra. And those uh, authentic, real ones, they would say, it's not a religion, it's a way of life. So quit trying to make a religion out of it. Quit trying, it, it's a way of life itself. They're already living the way of life of the God of the Old Testament. They're already living that. Let's continue this discussion in the comments. For example, so I hope you had a lot of fun with this. I hope it was tremendously educational. And if you're learning at the Mystery School for real, please donate. Please donate to the Cash App. Please donate to the PayPal. Please join the Patreon. I hope everyone has the greatest day and the greatest life you could possibly have.